whole class and the, you know, even like the whole lab here, none of it would really be possible without a professor like Bruce, um, who he, he really kind of facilitates this entire envi class environment to be kind of an incubator of new ideas. He even encourages students who have built projects um, that are potentially patentable. He encourages them to actually pursue the patent um, through Cornell's uh, commercialization office. Uh, Bruce is really awesome. He dedicates so much of his time to this class and uh, to preparing his students. And you know, he spends long hours in the lab when he doesn't have to. You know, outside of work hours to make sure all the students are able to get not only get what they're trying to get done accomplished, but also to make sure they're learning. And he's, uh, you know, this wealth has this wealth of knowledge and dedication to the program, which is just inspiring to me. My name is Bruce Land. I'm a senior lecturer in electrical engineering. I've been at Cornell for 44 years. I started out at Cornell in biology, doing artificial intelligence. Switched to membrane biophysics when my first advisor died and I had to change advisors. And uh, there was a staff member in neurobiology where I, I, for a while I was working with microcontrollers in neurobiology and did some modeling in neurobiology, computer modeling. Then uh, after that switched to the Cornell Theory Center and, and dealt with supercomputer graphics for, for 10 years, doing, uh, taking scientific data and turning it into video. Uh, when the Theory Center lost its federal funding in 1997, by chance uh, found out that there was a teaching job in electrical engineering doing uh, embedded, uh, embedded teaching, so I came over here. Uh, I've been teaching embedded design, microcontroller design for about uh, 15 years now. We've uh, passed somewhere like uh, something like uh, 100, uh, 1,200 students through the course and uh, seen uh, a lot of very nice projects. ECE 4760 class has a five week final project that has to come in under $75 for the, for the prototype that they demonstrate. At least last year it was under $75. And some of the projects have been taken to commercial products. A, a few have made it to a patent application and about 15 have made it into a publication of some kind. The one project last year, two years ago, that made it to a product even before the class was finished was a swim, swimming coach pace clock that allowed a coach to sit in his office and use his Android handset to design a workout schedule, walk into the gym, press upload, and the, the, the workout schedule was, was bounced up to a giant pace clock with uh, foot high numerals that you could see while you were swimming. And then the, uh, the, the athletes who were doing the uh, exercise could, could follow the pace clock directions directly. And they sold two of those before the end of the year. So uh, very professional extruded aluminum case, nice uh, frosted uh, dark glass so that you could, you could see the LED shining out. Very, very nicely done. The, uh, one of the projects that's made it to the patent stage is a bicep curl trainer. You have a strap on your arm, you have a strap on your upper arm, and each of the straps has accelerometers on it, which can detect the shape of your arms in space, whether your, your elbows are too far back or too far forward, what the angle of your arms are relative, your lower arms relative to your upper arms. And it can act as a trainer to keep you in the right configuration for an optimum bicep curl. Uh, the feedback was kind of unique. They put little buzzer motors on each side of the arm and you automatically move away from a buzz. I think it's because it's like an insect. You move away from a buzz so that uh, 
the, the feedback was direct to the arm skin rather than audio or, or LED. It was a very direct, straightforward trainer. Engineering at Cornell prepares students for to retrain themselves whenever they need it. They're given a very good set of basic skills in math and language and organization so that they can go out into the real world and every five years or so completely re-educate themselves so they can keep up with technology and, and business. The, the skills they learn for the first two years are, are mostly theoretical, which is a solid basis for everything else. And then the next couple of years, they get to do some practical stuff. And uh, the course I teach is, a, is an effort to integrate everything they've learned in the so-called culminating design experience course. That's an ABET speak for a, accreditation speak for, for a, a course that ties together everything that the students have learned. So in the class, they have to use some mathematical techniques. They have to use their circuit design skills. They have to use their software skills to put together a project that uh, that makes sense in terms of its of its final of its final outcome. The students we we have in the course are are very motivated. Cornell Cornell attracts and keeps very motivated students, very smart students, and. Uh, they easily buy into a course where they, they have to do a large complicated project and part of the reason is that they own the project. They, they, uh, they specify the project based on the specifications that they produce then they have to build the project, debug it, and because they've specified it and built it, they work very hard to make it go.